So, um, so far I've studied four different things can happen to the graph. Horizontal shift, vertical shift, uh, amplitude change, period change. So what's going on here with this plus pi over four? What, what is that? What effect does that have on the graph? No. To the left pi over four. To the left pi over four. Nothing else changes, just to the left pi over four. No. Okay, so normally we see a sine wave looks like this. Starts at the, the midline, goes up to the max, down to the min, and back up. And there's a full period. Uh, this would be at zero. And this would be two pi. So this would be pi, half of that. This would be half of that. And this would be three quarters of the whole thing. Three pi over two. But it moves over pi over four. Okay, so we gotta figure out where does that put everything? moves all of these points, these five points are, are, are the good points. You want to take those points and move them to the left, pi over four, and that way you'll know, you know, have a good guideline for where everything winds up. So we're going to start with zero, right? This point that's at zero is going to move to the left, pi over four. So let's see where that winds up. It's pretty easy. Zero minus pi over four is pi over four. Okay, so that means it's pi over two, so pi over four. Or there's a point right there. And then this guy right here, pi over two. It moves to the left, pi over four. That's uh, four pi. Uh, no, that's two pi over four. Yeah, minus pi over four. That's pi over four. How do you get that? Common denominator. Get a common denominator, so we multiply this by two. Multiply this by 2. 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. Pi over 4. So here is positive pi over 4. And that point is going to be up here at the maximum. Alright, so we move this one over. We move this one over. We're going to move this one over. Pi minus pi over 4. Get a common denominator. 4 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 4 would be right here. And move this guy over, 3 pi over 2, move it to the left. So 3 pi over 4, or 2, minus pi over 4, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, 6 pi over 4, minus pi over 4, is 5 pi over 4. Okay, 5 pi over 4 is right here between pi and 3 pi over 2. Oh, it's going to be down here in the middle. And then we move this guy to 2 pi, we move it to the left, pi over 4, okay, so we multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, 8 pi over 4, minus pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, that's right here between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, brings it back to the midline, and down through the midline, minimum. know which points there are, that would mean we would change the period if necessary. Once you find those points, we move them to the left or the right. Leave that horizontal shift to the very end. Always. Alright, other questions? 19. 3 going to change? The amplitude is now 3. How about this negative 1? What's that going to do? Down. Down. 1. Uh, what about the period? 
Rio Superior going to be? change. There's nothing here to change it. There's a 1. Period 2 pi over b, 2 pi over 1, b, <coughs> and pi. And lastly, this guy right here. <coughs> Left 3 pi over 4. I would say, whatever you do, just leave the horizontal shift for last, and you'll be in See, show that uh, shift down one. Show that amplitude of three. So that's down at negative one. So I come up one, two, three to two. And down one, two, three to negative four. So that's where we're going to go back and forth. The maximum and minimum are going to be between two and negative four. Check, down one, check, it's, it's got an amplitude of three. So the last thing to do is? Left. Left, three pi over four. It's the cosine wave. Uh, it does a full period in two pi as well. So this is two pi, and this is pi, this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. So we're going to take all these points and move them to the left, 3 pi over 4, figure out where, all they, where they all land. So these points are 0, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We're going to take all those, move them to the left, 3 pi over 4, that's the fact 3 pi over 4 from every level. Minus 3 pi over 4, minus 3 pi over 4, minus 3 pi over 4. Zero minus three pi over four is negative three pi over four. Get a common denominator here. We'll have two pi over four, negative pi over four, four pi over four for the common denominator, pi over four, six pi over four, minus three pi over four. The point that was at zero moves to negative three pi over four. The, the, the point at pi over two moves to negative pi over four, and so on. The next to them. This point that was at zero moves to the left three pi over four. So let's see, this is pi over two. So this is pi over four, two pi over four, negative three pi over four. So this point that was at zero moves over here. This guy from pi over two moves to the left. Uh, it's a negative pi over 4. And this guy moves to the left. So pi over 4. Here's pi over 4. Right there. This one moves over to 3 pi over 4. That's going to be right here. And it's going to be at the midline. And I'm putting those dots in the wrong place. They should be on the midline. Back up here, this point, this right here, should shift over. Uh, to 5 pi over 4, so that'd be right here. Now that we shifted them all, I just connect them with the best cosine wave we possibly can draw. Change the shape. That's good. Okay. 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 Then 
to clear desk, let's get a piece of paper. graph sky. This is like an example from um, first section, 14.1, where we'll see this changing what about the graph? Amplitude. Anything else? What about that negative? What does that mean? It just means uh, means what? That the amplitude's three because you gotta take the absolute value. Yes, the amplitude is three, but that negative's gotta do something. Flips it, it, yeah, flips it down, right? If, it's, yeah. if something is positive, five, then it would be multiplied by the negative, and be negative. So it flips it over. So uh, flips vertically. And this guy, what does this guy do? What does it affect? The period. That's B, right? How do we find the period? So the period of this one is 2 pi over 4 pi over 2, if we cancel out those 2s. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't shift up or down, and also it doesn't shift left or right. So we just have an amplitude of 3, we'll mark that off. When we start drawing this, we'll make sure to draw it upside down from what it normally is. But the period is pi over 2. So I'll mark off the period of pi over 2. This is pi over 4, which means this is what? Pi over 6 or 8. 8. Which one is it? It can't be either. Eight. Definitely 8. 3 pi over 8. This is always the full period, half of that, half of that. And this is 3 of those, 3 fourths. This is a fourth of the period. Gonna trace out a cosine wave that's upside down and has this amplitude of three. Three down, negative three is the midline. So it would normally go like this, that would be a cosine wave, but it's upside it's down. Side. What? Oh, I don't know why I keep saying cosine. Okay, so it would normally go like this, but it should go like this. Okay. Starts here on the midline, down minimum, up to midline, up to maximum, and down to the minimum. Go. Upside down, amplitude of 3, period of pi over 2. Got all those things taken care of. Are these all work for? Yes. All right, any reason I shouldn't move on? Questions? Cosine of x minus pi plus 2. What was this plus 2 do? Move it up 2. Up 2. What about this plus or minus pi? Right, right pi. Right pi. Right pi. The period is not changed, so we don't have to worry about that yet. So the period is still 2 pi. This is pi. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. We move this 0 over. It's pi over 2. Pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Um, it's a cosine wave. It should look like, oh, it's got, a, it's got an amplitude of 1. So it should look like this, right? But it needs to move to the right pi. It's pretty simple. So if this moves right pi, then this point that's at zero will move over to pi. 
add pi to that. Move that over to over to pi. Everything else moves as well. So this will be at pi. This at the midline will be at three pi over two. It's down here. This will be at two pi. Where where will it cross the midline again? Two pi would be three pi over two plus a pi. Five pi, five pi over two. Five pi. Okay, this guy used to be right here. The maximum used to be at two pi. Two pi plus pi is three pi. I got it. It's three pi right there. We got to shift up. Same amplitude, amplitude of one, so this is going to be three and one. <coughs> Moves up from two and then down from two. Any questions before we do the last one? Okay. I thought that might have been a question. It sounds like a rant. Things are going to change. Let's list them off. What's going to What's going to happen to this graph? Everything. Amplitude. Everything. What? Everything. Okay, that's good enough. Amplitude. Two. Four things. Amplitude. Period. Vertical shift. Horizontal shift. All those things are going to change. The last thing that I'd recommend that always be the last thing. Does anybody remember? The horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. Just leave it to the end. Do everything else. Do the horizontal shift at the end because you need to always do the horizontal shift after the period change. Don't do that, you know, like the rules for doing that just are more confusing. Right? So it's much easier to change the period and then shift it. So we got amplitude of two, no flipping. Okay, it says it on the clock. Period equals two pi over four. Period equals pi over two. We got a shift to the left, pi over three. And down three. Uh, some other clock we should know? Oh, uh, no.
Hey, what about those? Do you think those labels are right? No. Why not? Uh, because it should be four. Three, two. Three, four. Four. Oh. Three, four. 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 Three, Oh, it's <laughs> pi over two. Here is two pi over four. We took two pi over four, and we got pi over two. So, so yeah, we just erase them and then change what they say, and then we'll be smart. Uh, right here, it's pi over two. Why you made those what? four marks, right? So you get what? Oh, yeah, this is the Hi, over three. Yeah. 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 Ye
right side is. It's bigger. Yeah, because it's, six, it's yeah. a six instead of an eight. eight. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit past the, an eight, and uh, it's smaller than a four. in the middle now.
forgot the period for a second, then we had to change the period. Don't forget about that. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, are you sorry? No. no. Her hair got cut. Oh, oh, okay. That's the sorry. Uh, this is very good. So, Dakota knows what he's doing. Maybe he needs to. Um, Everybody follow? Any questions about that one? <coughs> you know, we kind of grabbed points seemingly at random and moving them over five or three, but did it to all of them, kept it all straight, moved them to the right place, you get all the right values. Any questions about that? glad to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and, and explain all of it. Um, so come before or after school or lunch or whatever it takes, let's sit down and we'll go over whatever you want. Or if you missed his, his lecture is online, and you can watch everything we did in class. It doesn't help. Why not? It just doesn't help me. Then also I invited you to come in before or after school. And and most of us don't understand it though, like I didn't know. Instead of all coming in one on one. Because I don't understand it at all either. School. side of X. How many of you want to go over all this again? Got four. How many don't want to go over this all over again? <laughs> and it's not like down on anybody, but that's not most of us. That's not almost everybody who feels like we should go over this all over again. And again, I'd be glad. Like, you can come in as, as a group. You can sit down, we'll go over it again. Start with 14.3. Um, oh, I'm sorry, score the, the quizzes and get around.
simplify some expressions. So first let's start with just a little bubble means remembering. This is stuff that we should remember that we've seen before. So the secant. The secant is 1 over what? The sine. The cosine. Cosine. And this cosecant? Cosine. 1 over the sine. And the cotan is 1 over the Also, the tangent can be written as sine over cosine. And the cotangent can be written as cosine over the sine. The sine. All right. And then, I got this thing called the Pythagorean identities. And uh, I was going to like draw a picture and, and prove it out to you, but um, in the interest of time. Pythagorean identities, because we can see the Pythagorean theorem and the unit circle to prove these. You know, if you go around the unit circle and look at any angle, you can draw a triangle there. Uh, you can take the sine as, as the vertical side, and the cosine as the horizontal side, and the whole hypotenuse is always 1. And anywhere on the unit circle, the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. You can try it anywhere. Uh, you know, 45 degrees squared to 2 over 2 squared plus square root of 2 over 2 squared is going to be equal to 1. If we divide both sides by uh, cosine squared, then we'll get tangent squared, that's thing up, plus one equals the secant squared. Wait, how does it do? That's just by dividing everything by cosine. Divide this by cosine, that's gonna be the tangent. Divide this by the cosine, just cancels it out, it's one. One, one over the cosine squared would be we take this guy and we do the same thing, but we divide everything by the sine squared, we get 1 plus cotangent squared equals uh, 1 divided by the sine squared would be the uh, cosecant squared. So we're going to uh, rewrite some trigonometric expressions uh, using these identities. It's also on the first page of 14.3. And actually, there's more on the first page of 14.3. There's these things called the uh, co function identities and the. Mm, the other one? Negative angle identities. We don't want to even worry about those. Okay? It's going to keep it easy. It's simple. It's not easy, yes, but simpler than. So it's like something simple that, that could uh, like have just a plain old simple cancellation happen. Like if you had the sine of theta times the cotangent of theta. So it, it can be useful to, to simplify this expression so that we don't have to take the sine of the angle and multiply by the cotangent of the angle. Maybe we could just Simplify it down and have to do less work. Okay. So one of my suggestions is to re rewrite uh, using sine and cosine. Here's what I mean by that. I don't need to rewrite this in terms of sine and cosine. It already is sine. But this one, is, how can I write cotangent in terms of sine and cosine? Cosine over sine. Cosine over sine was on that first page reference if you don't remember. We're multiplying these together. This is sine of theta over 1. So what happens there? If I multiply sine times cosine over sine, sine cancels out. And that's just a cosine. It's a full example. When we're multiplying or dividing, um, a lot of times when it's multiplying or dividing stuff, then let's rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine. Everything can be written in terms of sine and cosine. And maybe some stuff will cancel out. Uh, for instance, the so the cosine over the secant. The cosine over the secant. Okay. 
What's that? That's what you got at the end? How do you do that? One over for a second equals one over the cosine. Right? And so that'd be cosine over one over cosine. And then you can get that you get that cosine out of the bottom. Just take it out. One over the top. Uh, like multiply by the reciprocal of one over yeah. cosine? So that's cosine. Cosine times cosine. Times cosine over one then. So cosine times cosine? Cosine squared. And that brings up a, a point I wanted to make. Cosine squared, right here, it means cosine times cosine. That's not immediately obvious when you look at that. Okay. But if that's what you thought it was, that is what it means. It means the same thing as if we just take the cosine, put parentheses around it, square it. That's what that means. Try one out. Any ideas? Uh, one over the This is what? One over the cosine squared. One over the cosine squared. Over. Sine over cosine squared. Sine over cosine. Sine squared over cosine squared. One over sine squared. Yeah. And what's one over sine squared called? Oh, it's cosecant. Uh, cosecant. Cosecant. So we can just write this as cosecant squared. Huh? There's, there's one idea. Change everything into sine and cosine, especially when 
There's multiplication and division involved. Okay? So remember that multiplication and division. Because that idea is we're hoping that by multiplying these fractions together, we get some canceling. Right? Get some canceling out. Um, now, let's see. What about. What about. See, yeah, I do two of custom is. Yeah, squared. X. Um, minus. That be simplified somehow. Yeah. Okay, now don't. Now think of something else besides writing in terms of sine and cosine. Remember I said that that was probably the most useful when you have multiplication and division. Here we have subtraction. So go back and look at all those identities that we wrote down, like the Pythagorean identities. Oh, no. See if you can figure out what secant squared minus one might be simplified to. <laughs> what did you do? It sounds good. What did you do? All right, so <laughs> what, what does the next step on your paper look like? Uh, plus one on both sides? I don't know, I don't know what you're asking. Um, how, did you, how did you, so are you saying it's tangent squared? That's it? Tangent squared plus one equals the secant squared x minus one. <laughs> Okay, a couple different ways to think about this. Secant squared, if you look at the Pythagorean identity, secant squared is equal to tangent squared plus one. Okay. That's just this. So this is secant squared, and then we still have this minus one. Plus one and minus one cancel. Tangent squared x, there we go. Cool. Wait, what? Why do you have tangent two x? Tangent squared, that's what that's supposed to look like. Tangent of two x, but tangent squared of x. Yeah. So we're going back here to this first page. Tangent squared plus one is the same as secant squared, so oh, I just so replaced it. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. like, where did the x come from? <laughs> that was weird. Oh, get it now. did I use a different variable? Or something? No, no, yeah. you, I, I, you no, it was right. We oh, okay. Yeah. The oh, you were ordering y to x instead of theta. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can use any letter you want. That's why. Okay. A, B, Q, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the Okay. Or if we look back at the first page, we can see that um, tangent squared x, or theta, or whatever, plus 1 equals secant squared of x. If we subtract 1 on both sides, then we get. Tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus 1. Okay. This, that, what we started with, and tangent squared are the same. So we could just replace secant squared x minus 1 with tangent squared x. Because they're the same. If we just manipulate this equation to get one side of it to look like secant squared x minus 1, then we can just replace it with tangent. Pythagorean identities and see if there's some kind of a substitution that you can make. This could be replaced with this other thing. Katie, what's the answer? Cosine times secant. Cosine times just secant squared. Uh huh. Okay, good. Yeah, 
Replace one plus tangent squared with secant squared? Is there more we can do? Yeah. What can we do? Uh, change secant to one over the cosine of theta times over cosine uh, squared theta. And then put them over one and then it'll be. This over one? Yeah. And then ones will cancel and then a cosine will cancel out. One of the cosines? Cosine. It'll just be one over cosine? Uh, yep. And, and it's still down here. And then we put up to the top. Up to the top? Or do only ones cancel? Remember ones cancel, so only two plus sign? Well, the ones cancel, but when you cancel something, like if you're doing 5 thirds times Three 4 fifteenths, when I cancel the 15 and the 5, what does the 5? One times the 1. So yeah, when the ones cancel, they just turn into ones. They already were. Well, don't we call the one over cosine? Don't we call that something? Oh yeah, we call that the secant. We call that the secant. <laughs> yeah, it just has its own name, secant of theta. Wow, that's pretty neat. So that's definitely different from graphing. It's just like a, a different kind of a. Uh, aspect of, of trig where we cancel things out, we simplify trigonometric expressions. trying to cancel the x squared and the x squared. Okay, but there's this 2x plus 1. See, we can't cancel out things unless they're common factors, and factors are things that are multiplied. These are not multiplied. This is not secant squared times 1. It's secant squared minus 1. So we can't cancel those out. Now, if it was secant squared times cosine squared, or something like that, or times 5 or whatever, then because it's multiplied, now it's a factor, you can cancel out common factors. But that's not the case here. Yeah, it's good. Sine squared? You just took it all the way to the end, or do I just take it step by step here? Oh. You're right, so take it step by step. Uh, hmm? Well, I got tangent squared over secant squared. So you remember maybe this from earlier? Yeah. Okay, tangent squared then over secant squared. That's a good move. And then? And then it'd be sine squared over cosine squared okay. over. Give me a second. One over. Right, that took a while. <laughs> then multiply by the reciprocal. Somebody say what? No, I'm good. Okay. Sine okay. squared x over cosine squared x times cosine squared x over one. Cancel out. All that's left is sine squared. sorts of variations out there, but just keeps being about the same idea. Cool call. Um, so for both of these sections, uh, so far just in 4.3, but I've gone through and done an example for every problem, and I just took your homework problem, changed it a little bit. So it's still very similar, but like the numbers or the actual trig uh, functions that it uses are different. So I'm not just doing your homework for you, okay? But for three, I do ones very similar to three. And for 11, it's very similar to 11 and so on. Uh, okay, so there's a video on the Algebra uh, 2 playlist that you can check out. Yeah? Do those both say 14.3? No. 14.5 or 14.3? Okay. 
That says five and three. Originally, I was going to do five first, but then I did three first. Um, yeah, 14.5 is pretty intensive. 